um, a lot of uh, things that we want to do this year, and this is the year to do them. You guys, things are heating up, and we're going to talk about that. The reason I read you um, this, uh, this passage in uh, Luke 21 is because it says there will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events and great signs from heaven. This is Jesus talking about the signs of his return, the end of the age, which will culminate in his return. Um, and we are seeing these things. And I want you to be aware of the fact that when he says there will be great earthquakes, that phrase, great earthquakes, is megas seismos. And that means great, big, huge, either earthquake or tempest. You know, when Jesus silenced the storm, that was um, the same word that is used here for earthquake. So we're seeing all of those things, aren't we? We're seeing earthquakes. We're seeing these big storms. And um, we're, we're watching these things increase. Um, we are watching Jesus' words come to pass. We're hearing this more and more. Um, we're hearing about these, these huge events that are the biggest or one of the top five or one of the top three that we've ever seen. Or, you know, these are breaking different kinds of records, but um, we're seeing it more and more. It's just like hammering us, isn't it? And this is all over the world. You know, tsunamis, earthquakes. It says that the roaring of the ocean, Jesus said that it would cause men to tremble and fear, be afraid, okay? And we've definitely seen that. Um, with our eyes now, we have seen the devastation of a tsunami rolling in, and we now know what that means, Where, whereas we could not have seen that before. Jesus said, when you see these things, then you know that this is, is happening in your, um, in your generation. This is the generation um, where we are seeing these things with our eyes, whereas we would have just heard of them before. Um, we are now experiencing them as we see them live on television. Gary and I sat up and watched in horror as um, we saw the live cameras capturing the tsunami coming in. And, you know, we always heard about tsunamis before, but until you see it, you do not understand the devastation. You do not feel the pain in the same way. But now we're all feeling this pain of childbirth. As Jesus said, it'll be like a woman in childbirth. You know, at the beginning, those birth pains come um, and they're sporadic, but then they, they come harder and harder and uh, they're longer and closer together. And um, that's what we're experiencing. So as that pain grips us, okay, then there, there is an appropriate way for us to respond, okay? We need to cry out when we feel this pain. Some people rejoice when they think that God is judging other people and they say, hey, God's judgment is on you and you deserve it, you wretched sinner, you know, ha, ha, ha. And they mock people because they believe that God's judgment is coming on them when these horrible things are happening. Sometimes it will be God's judgment, we're told in Revelation. But as, as that woman in, in, uh, in childbirth the appropriate thing for us to do as the body of Christ, as those who are filled with that compassionate spirit, is to cry out to the Lord. We need to cry out to God for mercy, for people to come to God, for people to respond to these things, not with rebellion, but for all of those who have a heart to hear ears to hear him, for, for these things to bring them to reality and, and draw them to him. So we need to have that sense of urgency. Um, going into this uh, Christmas season and going into this next year, we need to go into it strong, um, committed. Um, we need to be on our knees asking God, you know, God, what is my assignment? I'm not just here uh, to just pass the time. What is my assignment in your army? So I want to challenge you guys to do that. Um, because, you know, God has you here for a purpose. And later on in Luke 21, he says this. He says, I tell you the truth, this generation, he's talking to you, okay? This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. He says um, in another place that it, in this generation it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. They were just going about their daily business, marrying and giving in marriage, going about their daily business, doing their thing. And then nobody knew that the flood was coming until, boom, it hit. One day everything changed. 
Well, they, it wasn't that nobody told them because the Bible also tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He was preaching the message. He was warning people. He was telling people what was getting ready to happen. And he was also building a huge boat in the middle of nowhere. So that was also a clue. You know, people were asking him, what are you doing? It's not like the message wasn't out there, but they weren't ready because they were caught up in the everyday, you know, things of life. And so he's telling us, as Christians, be careful, or that's going to happen to you. You're going to be weighed down by dissipation. Dissipation or debauchery um, means um, that you're spending your life in just uh, pursuing sinful desires. It's a wasteful existence, okay? Just uh, wasting your life away in pursuing sinful things, okay? Just the things of the flesh. But it has a sense of sinfulness and also just being wasted away. Drunkenness, if that's an issue, you know, um, and the anxieties of life, okay? Think about it. Are we not, you know, so often, especially sometimes in the Christmas season, which is crazy because, you know, it's supposed to be about Jesus and we know how that gets turned around on its head to be about materialism and we get worried about the stupidest things, don't we? <laughs> when God has met all of our needs and we have the hope of Jesus Christ, we don't even have to be afraid of death. What a blessing is that, you guys? Think about all the people in the world that are looking at these earthquakes and these big storms and these fearful things happening and these shootings and the violence and people turning against each other. But they don't have the hope that you have. They don't have the hope of going to heaven. They don't have the comfort of Jesus Christ. We have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? But he's saying, be careful, because when you look around at all these things that I just told you about that are going to happen that Jesus tells us in this passage are going to happen, you, your heart can get weighed down with anxiety if you let it. And then the day of, of Christ is going to close in on you like a trap. Well, how could that happen? Because we're so busy taking care of these things and worrying about tomorrow that we're not getting ready, that that day closes in on us and we're not ready to face him. Because when we face him, he says that he's going to require an accounting. He said, anybody who's been given a trust I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to require an accounting from them. And you have been given so much when you know Jesus Christ, when you know the word of God, you have been given a great hope that is sitting inside of you. And God expects you to administer that um, in different ways. The Spirit uses us in different ways. Not everyone, you know, prophesies. It says not everyone does miracles. Not everyone has different gifts. Um, there are different gifts of hospitality and different ways that we administer that Spirit. But it's all the same Spirit, and He gives us all spiritual gifts. And we're all to support the body and the work of Christ as we were just talking about, supporting it financially, supporting each other personally. If you are focused, instead of on the anxieties of life and the scary things that are going on around you, if you are focused on the fact that you are here for a purpose and you are reporting to Jesus as if you will give an accounting for the time and resources that you have here, then that day is not going to close in on you like a trap. And you're not going to be disappointed when you stand in front of him. You know, when we kind of waste um, our time that we do have, we waste it away one hour at a time, one day at a time. We don't realize that it's slipping away from us like that sand through the hourglass, you know, because it's kind of going in our minds. It kind of goes little by little and we just don't see that. But we will understand it if we let that happen. And then we stand before him and we see his beauty and his glory. And we don't want to be saying to ourselves, why didn't I do more for this great person? I could have done so much more. Why did I waste my life worrying in anxiety when he promised he was going to take care of me? Why did I waste my money on stupid things that don't matter? Why did I spend my time uh, chasing after the things that the world chases when, you know, he told me that he's going to take care of me every day and that he would satisfy me? Why didn't I believe him? I could have done so much more for this king. You guys, you're gonna, your heart is going to be so moved when you see him. He's glorious. He's, he's frightening. You know, people fall down um, at his feet when they see him. But, you know, he always reaches out his hand and he says, don't be afraid. And then you look into his face and, you know, what are you going to be able to say? Are you going to be able to say, I gave everything I could. I ran this race as hard as I can. That's what the Spirit is here to entreat you to do tonight. Okay? All of us to have that sense of urgency. So every time you see a storm, every time you see an earthquake, every time you see um, these record-breaking um, events that are happening, 
Um, and all of these prophecies coming to pass every time should be a reminder. Every time needs to urge us on to say, hey, I am running a race and I need to tighten my bootstraps. You know, if I've gotten a little lax, I need to shed all that stuff that so easily entangles me because Jesus is coming back. That's the hope that we have. You know, it says when you see these things, everybody else is going to be freaking out and scared. But when you see these things, it says lift your eyes because your redemption is close. It is near, right? We need to be full of joy in this time and also full of purpose. So we are really excited about the changes that are coming in 2014. Now I shared with you that um, a few months ago, we started to um, have a major increase in our viewership and we are now experiencing an increase um, in our subscribers. It's really going up on all, really all over, you know, all the sites on YouTube, but also everywhere. We're growing. Now, it's, um, we have a big job to do, okay? So understand that it, this is all relatively speaking. Um, but our ultimate goal is to reach the whole world. And that's not a joke. That's definitely doable with the Internet and with you. Um, as we work together, we have actually reached every single country in the world and we have literally been viewed in Antarctica. So we've also reached every continent on planet Earth, which is awesome. We're very happy about that, but it's not nearly enough, okay? Yes, we've touched every country. That's major, okay? And we've we've gone through, we have the data, we know. We have touched every country, we have viewers in every country, but now it is time for saturation, okay? And Jesus is coming back. So we have a plan, all right, for the beginning of the year. We're very excited about it. We have a distribution goal. It is a God-sized job, and this is a job that we cannot do alone. We need your help in order to do this. Um, so we need you guys to be clicking on the donate button. You know that. Thank you for doing that. Over Christmas, I hope that you will remember us because, you know, Christmas is a time when people's pocketbooks, they get kind of, um, they get kind of clenched, you know, because there are all these extra expenses. And what, what people don't realize is that giving a lot of times for ministries like ours, it goes down and it becomes a very hard time um, for a, a ministry like ours. Um, let's make this Christmas different. OK, you guys, because it's exactly the opposite of what we want at Christmas time um, to have our budget squeezed at this ministry, because, uh, you know, our budget is for distribution. You know, after we pay basic bills, we keep all those expenses down as much as we can so that we can put as much money as we possibly can into distribution, okay? So we can reach out to people, advertise to people, reach out to where they are and draw them in to hear the message uh, from God's word uh, that Jesus is coming back and uh, just, you know, the encouragement that they need from that. We know that's our job before Jesus comes back. Um, but during the Christmas season, you know, when the budget gets squeezed at Christmas, we need to reach more people, not less, because people are really in a lot of pain. It's a very lonely time for a lot of people, people who don't have family, people whose relationships are broken. It's like salt in a wound when, you know, Christmas time comes around because that's the time when you're supposed to have all of those things. And so when people don't, they get really depressed, they get lonely, and they really uh, are in a place of need, but also in um, the most receptive uh, time uh, many times uh, to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and to hear the message of love when God is reaching out to them. You know, when we're in our most vulnerable places, um, it is often in those times that we're most open to God, you know, because we're, we need God, you know, when we hit rock bottom. And there are so many people like that. So over this Christmas season, really want to ask you guys to just pitch in and say, hey, we're going to give a, we're going to give a gift to Jesus um, we're going to we're going to donate to the ministry. We're going to give an extra special gift to Jesus. We're not going to cut back. We're going to give more than before. And just keep that in mind as you're going into this season. But what I want to tell you about is at the beginning of the year, we have got plans. OK, and we are excited about it. We are going to be revamping the way that we distribute things. And we um, are going to be de-emphasizing um, some of the places that we've been um, distributing so that we can focus on Twitter and YouTube. Those are going to be our two major places that we distribute. Now, if you're already on the mailing list, that's great. Um, if you have a Twitter account, you need to go subscribe right now. Go subscribe to us and um, because we are going to be putting everything that we do through Twitter, okay? And I'm going to be 
on Twitter, which I really haven't been before. We've just been using it for distribution, but we haven't focused on it. So that's going to change. Okay. Everything's going to go through Twitter. So if you're on Facebook and you think you're going to see, you know, what we're doing on Facebook, we're going to be de-emphasizing Facebook. That's not really the place that you're going to be able to see what's going on. Twitter is the place you want to be and YouTube. Okay. So go and subscribe at those, those two places and just do it right now if you're not already. And I look forward to hearing from you on Twitter. You know, I'm going to uh, begin to use that as, um, a, as a communication tool instead of all these other places. So Twitter's the place to be. And um, I look forward to seeing all of you guys popping up on there. These changes are coming the first quarter of 2014. So um, go and get ready for them. Go and subscribe in those two places. And um, we'll keep you posted on everything that's happening.